So you should always take long-term view and you should always uh, like, you know, have a plan that suits you. Um, what I do is really specific to, you know, my job I, is really looking at the markets all the time. So when I see bearish phases, you know, I'll, I'll sell immediately because it's, you know, a big chunk is my trade account on, on exchanges. And so I move to cash and the rest I let ride because that's my sovereign stack. Um, that and then you know i'm constantly taking profits to cash and then i'm you know putting into cash yield and other investments so i try to keep a very sort of um specific portfolio always a minimum of 10 percent in cash and i said last time you know that cash is for um iq protection like in in a down market you want to retain your sanity and your ability to think and when you have zero cash when the thing's crashing you tend to lose it and you probably find that um your iq drops and you won't be able to have a rational decision at the bottom it'll be emotional so um i always keep 10 percent in cash um the amount of exposure i have will vary depending on you know the price action regime and it swings massive like i could be like like here i was very much leverage you know and then um i went to cash around here around the time i sent out that we're going into multi-months of beer around there um i went to cash people sometimes think i sold the top there because they think i'm some sort of you know legend or something but no it was it took a while for the on chain to go yeah this is screwed and um i sold to cash um but that was just my exchange account um and like yeah so that's my plan and if we start to enter any kind of phase that looks um like long-term topish i might move my cash positioning to 15 percent. when i say cash positioning i mean not the cash sitting on exchange that can go back into bitcoin at a drop of a hat this is going and being deployed into that um, cash instrument that's generating a yield that that hedge fund this or that so um, that stuff's much you know they're kind of on a monthly schedule that the windows are open to put money into those kind of instruments um so that's my plan it's not like it's not like the 2017 plan the 2017 plan was ride this up and not trying to tighten the top wait for this 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 dead cat bounce whenever it crashes there's always one bounce wait for the dead cat bounce and then look at the market structure and the market structure here was bearish because the the volume had dropped away from the blockchain so that was my plan, which I executed. I sold around 12,000, 11 to 12,000. Um, it wasn't the 20,000, but at least I didn't sell here, trying to time the the like 10,000 top. There's a lot of people thought 10,000 was the top. I didn't sell the 7,000. I just said, I'm not going to try and time it. I need a solid signal. And then I sold all of it. And then I waited till here um, into the zone here I accumulated. So, I mean, just have a plan that suits you. like. Um, and I think I was the only one that was trading NVT at the time. So that was a signal that was more likely to work because no one else was like looking at it. Um, now I'm more measured. I'm just going to diversify and keep cash. And I, I, my, my view of it is that we're entering a um, the last cycle. I mean, this is going to do a drunken wander upwards like this and not look like um, your four-year parabolic. Like, you know, the vertical reds are the halvenings and we have like, that kind of one two and then we one's mm. expecting a three and a four i'm going <laughs> no i think it's drunken walk all the way up till um we reach the the million the million or the 10 million or whatever the saturation point gets to and so that just takes a different strategy for me um, you think we would see an 80 percent uh drop in the bear market or in the bear yeah market? well we've seen that the 50 percent pullback is um that we just saw here that was a 50%, really, um, 60 to 30, a um, bit more than 60%. Similarly here in COVID flash crash, right? Um, so, and again here, 6,000 to 3,000. So I think that that's starting to show as a 50% seems to be where the liquidity is found in a liquidation event. Um, all of the pullbacks to date have been liquidations. Thank you, futures contracts. So it's not spot sell-offs. And so it's even a different mechanism. Um, and so that seems like a nice one. I I could see it being, a, maybe we, I could see it 
being an 80 to 85 percent pullback and a total um, liquidity failure but in that case I, I'd expect it to spike up pretty quick you know it probably 50 percent is the long-term daily draw draw down 85 percent might be in a wick if like some exchanges completely shit themselves um, but yeah um, certainly not I think the main thing is not the drawdown but how long does it take to recover like should it take this over one year like we saw here and here or is it like three or four months so i don't think we'll see the one year recoveries and pullbacks i don't think we'll get a um, parabolic um blow off top um and i think we're like we saw with this rounded top here is a sign of things to come because the the market's very sophisticated now you don't really see blow off tops in you know equities um, you see it in, um, you know, penny stocks, you'll see it in, um, you know, altcoins, you'll see it in Bitcoin when it's very young. Um, but now it's much more sophisticated, um, a lot of money to be done taking the short side as well when it gets overheated. So, um, yeah, I, I think we get more rounded tops. It, it will start to look more like um, the larger markets, like the equities markets moving forward. I, I'm not thinking like i think of these predictions of four hundred thousand. um they're contingent of a blow off top um like this top model here you seem to hit it on a blow off top um and so that target right now is in the two hundred ten thousand. um but it i'm not sure if we're going to get a blow off top anymore i'm looking at this kind of stuff and this this i mean the fomo in here was comparable to the fomo in here right um we were around we saw it um and then we got a rounded top as the big guy started to dump and divest over a distribution top. Um, you know, Ruffer started selling. There was a number of people selling. We saw a lot of red dots in the whale, the whale tracking heat map. Um, and I think that that's a sign of things to come. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.